It's time for another roundup of all that's great in the world of archaeology. The basic rule of archaeology is a simple one. The more we dig, the more we find. Fortunately, archaeologists never stop digging, so they never stop finding things. Here are just a few of the most incredible things they found during the course of their work. Despite its name, the Vix Crater is not a hole in the ground. Instead, it's an enormous Greek wine-mixing vessel. This stunning artifact is so named because it was discovered in Vix, France during the early 1950s. All Greek wine-mixing vessels are called craters, but the Vix Crater is an especially fine example. It's more than 5 feet tall and weighs 450 pounds, making it comfortably the largest classical Greek bronze vessel archaeologists have ever discovered. It would be an impressive discovery even if it was a plain jug. But the Vix Crater is elaborately decorated with a frieze depicting hoplites. Archaeologists believe it was made somewhere between 2,500 and 2,600 years ago. The artifact is part of a wider collection of archaeological artifacts known as the Vix Treasure, which also includes jewelry and personal effects belonging to an ancient Celtic woman of elite rank. We don't know her name, so historians refer to her simply as the Lady of Vix. It's likely that the crater was used only at important feasts hosted by elite members of the Celtic settlement that once existed in this part of France. The Kiskapan tomb of Dokan in Iraq is undoubtedly ancient, definitely rock cut, and certainly a tomb. Historians are in unanimous agreement about all three of those things. The controversy about the tomb is whether it was the final resting place of a great Midian king. Whoever was buried here was obviously someone of great importance. We can tell that from the Hellenistic carvings that decorate the tomb, as well as the tomb's regal columns and the Zoroastrian symbols on the walls. If legends are to be believed, the tomb was created for Cyxares, the last great king of the Midian Empire who put an end to Assyrian hegemony by bringing in the Median Age before losing out to the Persians. There's no proof of that, though, and the chances of archaeologists finding anything at the site to definitively tie it to the king are low because the tomb was repeatedly looted in times of antiquity. The only clue might be the religious scene depicted in relief above the main door, which shows a high-ranking person, possibly a king, standing by a fire altar with his hand raised in prayer. It's probable that a king was buried here, but we may never know which king. Human bodies are occasionally found in an old salt mine in the Zanjan district of Iran. The police never start an investigation, though, because by now, they've become accustomed to it. These bodies are those of their elders. Locals call them salt mummies because of their excellent state of preservation. Most of them still have long white hair and white beards. Archaeologists also call them salt mummies or salt men for two reasons. The first is that the bodies are always male. The second is that they have no better term to call them by. They have no idea who these people were or why they ventured so deep inside the mine, but they suspect they went there of their own free will rather than being buried inside it deliberately. At the deepest points of the mine, Bodies have been found that are so well preserved that they still have their skin and internal organs. The oldest of the recovered salt mummies is about 11,000 years old. By contrast, the youngest died around 2,000 years ago. That's 9,000 years of a culture we don't know using the mines for reasons we don't understand. It's quite a significant blind spot in Iranian history. Not all archaeological discoveries have happy endings. Back in 2019, archaeologists in Mexico found a tunnel full of ancient symbols in Ecatepec, Mexico State. It was considered such a significant discovery that the country's National Institute of Anthropology and History discussed plans to create a museum around the tunnel and open it up to the public. Instead, in July 2021, the government in Mexico decided there wasn't sufficient funding to perform the necessary work, and instead ordered the institute to scrap those plans and arrange for the tunnel to be reburied. The tunnel, 
which is part of a 17th century colonial dike system, was found to feature multiple pre-Hispanic symbols carved into its walls. The petroglyphs include birds of prey, shields, and stucco relief panels. There's also a crude stone temple dedicated to the rain god Tlaloc close to the entrance of the tunnel. This is undoubtedly a missed opportunity to open up an important chapter of Mexico's distant past to the general public. We can only hope that someone revisits the decision and decides to provide funding for the museum in the future. What's been covered can always be uncovered again. We tend to think of deserts as very hot places, but not all deserts are hot. There is such a thing as a cold desert, and Speedy Valley in India is one of them. The area isn't just known for its cold desert, though. It's also known for the unique rock art and the enormous number of petroglyphs that cover the rocks in this tribal part of Lahal Speedy. The petroglyphs are spread over an area of more than 10 square miles and are poorly understood by archaeologists and historians because of a lack of research. It's generally thought that the glyphs were created about 3,500 years ago, but nobody knows who created them or what they mean. With a bit of luck, all of this might change soon. The rock art of Speedy Valley has been shortlisted by UNESCO as a possible future World Heritage Site. If it's added to the World Heritage List, the region should receive more attention from historians and archaeologists, not to mention the tourists who might flock to the area to find out more about their nature's past. The mysteries of Speedy Valley might not remain mysteries for much longer. There are countless ancient ruins in Vietnam. It's impossible to say which of the country's ancient sites is the most impressive or the most important, but the My Son ruins have to be in the argument. The first of these abandoned Hindu temples were erected in the 4th century, with work continuing at the site for 1,000 years until the final temple was erected during the 14th century. All of the temples were built by order of the kings of Champa, rulers of the Cham people. Every king of Champa visited these temples for important religious occasions during their reign, and most of them took it upon themselves to have their own temple built rather than using those left behind by their predecessors. Some of the kings are even buried here, an honor reserved only for members of the royal family and those who were thought of as national heroes. Tragically, enormous damage was done to the temples by bombs dropped by the warplanes of the United States of America during the Vietnam War. There were once 70 temples standing at the site containing historically significant stelae and inscriptions, but many of them crumbled during the sustained assault. The name of the site, known as al Maktaz in Balqua, Jordan, translates into English as immersion or baptism, depending on how you want to interpret it. Many people refer to it as Bethany beyond the Jordan. This place of ancient wonder is officially listed as an archaeological UNESCO World Heritage Site. Legend has it that this was the place where Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist. The legend can be traced back to the Byzantine era, although obviously there's no way of knowing whether it's true or not. There are two main places of interest at al Maktas, an ancient monastery on a mound called Elijah's Hill and the remains of the churches and baptism ponds on the banks of the river. Aside from being where Christ was supposedly baptized, this is the place from which the prophet Elijah is said to have ascended to heaven, hence the name of the mound. Amazingly, there were still people living in and around this area until 1967, when it was abandoned during the Six-Day War because the banks of the Jordan became the war's front line. The area has since been demined, and thousands of people come here every January 6th to mark Epiphany. If you love wine, you'll also love this next discovery. It's an ancient winery that was found in a cave in Areni, Armenia in 2011. It's so old that archaeologists believe it to be the oldest winery in the world. Scientists have been able to carry out tests on a wine press at the site and have determined that it was first used around 6,100 years ago. A 5,500-year-old leather shoe was also found in the cave, and experts think the discoveries might be related. 
Local historians say that wine was made in the caves as part of a ritualistic process, perhaps a burial celebration, which involved people removing their shoes. We think it's more likely that the people who made the wine simply took their shoes off before trampling on the grapes, but we digress. The presence of wine was determined by chemical tests that revealed traces of malvidin, which is a plant pigment that gives red wine its color. The traces were detected on both the wine press and on fragments of pottery inside the cave, indicating that wine was pressed here and then stored in pots for later use. We know that wine lovers enjoy a good vintage wine, but 6,100 years might be a little too old even for their tastes. Let's look at another discovery from Armenia while we're here. Archaeologists have been working at a site in the country close to the Ararat Plain for much of the past decade. During that time, they've turned up plenty of exciting findings, including Neolithic settlements. Their biggest discovery, though, is the so-called Pyramid of Ararat Plain. Experts have dated the controversial structure to about 3,500 years ago and have identified similarities between the design of this pyramid and the many Mesoamerican pyramids of Mexico and the surrounding nations. Despite being more than 80 feet tall, the pyramid evaded detection until 2017 because it was buried under an enormous dust and debris layer thousands of years old. The Egyptian pyramids are tombs, but archaeologists don't believe that was the case with this Armenian pyramid. Instead, they think it might have been used as a shelter when nearby settlements were under attack. The oldest of the settlements in the surrounding area has been estimated to be 6,000 years old, so people may have lived here for several centuries before the pyramid was built. Even now, five years after its discovery, the pyramid is still being studied in the hope that it will one day be fully understood. Speaking of wine, from the moment that humans discovered you could make the stuff by crushing grapes, they've been imbibing it by the gallon. Wine drinking goes back thousands of years, but the vessels that people drink wine out of used to be a lot more decorative than they are now. The perfect example is Nestor's cup. This gorgeous ceramic vessel was found in the town of Laco Amino on the volcanic island of Ischia, close to Italy, in 1954. Based on the evidence, Archaeologists believe it was made on the island of Rhodes about 2,800 years ago. The three-line inscription on the side of the cup is among the oldest surviving examples of the original written Greek alphabet. It reads, I am the cup of Nestor, good for drinking. Whoever drinks from this cup will instantly be filled with desire for the beautifully crowned Aphrodite. Confusingly, the inscription seems to have been added to the cup hundreds of years after it was made it appears to be a claim that the cup is the very same one referred to in the ancient Greek epic poem known as the Iliad. That might be true, but it could never be proven. So little is known about the clown people of Peru that they were once thought to have been a myth. Legends say that they were a white-skinned indigenous people who lived in the area several centuries ago but there was almost no evidence of their existence until 2008. That's when an entire ancient city was found deep within the Amazon rainforests, and experts believe it's connected to this elusive culture. The city is really more of a fortified citadel in an especially isolated, mountainous area of the rainforest and would have afforded its occupants an excellent view of the surrounding area while remaining hidden. Within some of the ruined buildings, Archaeologists found rock paintings and platforms that appear to have been used to grind food and medicines. The people who lived here may be the same people who were written off by the Spanish conquistadors, who described them as a race of white-skinned, blonde-haired people who fought at their side against the Incas before succumbing to the diseases that were brought to the continent by their new European friends quite how a race of people with such an appearance could possibly have lived in South America during that time is unknown. But one theory is that they were descended from earlier Viking immigrants. The most confusing thing about the artifacts known as the Joseph Smith papyri is that they weren't created by Joseph Smith, 
founder of the Latter-day Saint movement. Smith might have dictated an entire religious book while staring at some stones in the bottom of his hat, but the Joseph Smith papyri do not contain the Book of Mormon. Instead, they're ancient Egyptian funerary papyrus fragments that Smith once owned, along with four ancient Egyptian mummies. The papyrus was created in Thebes somewhere between 2100 and 2300 years ago. Smith claimed that the papyrus contains the records of the ancient patriarchs Joseph and Abraham and published what he claimed was a partial translation of the Book of Abraham in 1842. A later examination by professional Egyptologists revealed that Smith's translation was nonsense. What Smith claimed to be the Book of Abraham is actually a funerary scroll made for a Theban priest by the name of Horus and is also known as the Hor Book of Breathing. The second text, which Smith identified as the Book of Joseph, is a separate funerary scroll made for someone called Ta Sharit Min and is a copy of the Book of the Dead. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.